Just downloading Hadoop is not enough to get a production-like environment. We must also make sure to configure it to our needs. In this part of the video, we will configure Hadoop such that it acts as a single node cluster. That means our name node and our data node will be on the same machine. However, creating a real cluster isn't that different. You would configure Hadoop to your needs, distribute that specific Hadoop instance to your data nodes, fire up the name node and connect your data nodes to your name node. In the following video, we will also configure Yarn, which is a resource manager. However, in this video, we won't be using Yarn. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we should configure is making sure that we have a fitting version of Java on our machine, since Hadoop runs in the Java virtual machine. You can check the current version of uh, Java by entering the following command into the terminal. So let's bring up a terminal and let's just enter Java hyphen hyphen version. So we are using OpenJDK 11 on that machine, which is okay. Now, next we must ensure that we have SSH installed and passwordless SSH is possible. SSH is a service used to lock into remote machines. For example, if I have a Linux machine on a cloud provider like Azure or AWS, I could use SSH in the terminal to remotely lock into this computer. So the general syntax for that is the name of the user you want to lock into as and the IP of the machine you want to use separated by an add symbol. So for example, if I have a Raspberry Pi in my local network under 192.168.0.10 and I use a user called Pi on it, I could connect to that machine as the user Pi by using the following command. So I could say ssh pi at 192.168.0.10. Uh, Hit enter, it would prompt me for a password and then I could just connect and use uh, that just like I would uh, use Debian on this virtual machine. Okay, but we're not going to do that because I don't have a Raspberry Pi connected to my local network at the moment. All right. So Hadoop uses SSH to communicate between the single nodes. In order for it to work uh, smoothly, we must ensure that passwordless SSH is properly configured. In our case, we only want to be able to SSH into the same machine um, so that it won't be hard. Also, we are basically SSHing into the same machine with the same user. Now, I know that sounds a bit weird, but it's what we have to do for Hadoop to run smoothly. Um, okay. So um, remember that passwordless SSH is used or it allows certain computers to lock into our computer um, without using a password. Now, of course, this should always be used with care. If you are in a production setting, you should definitely know what you're doing. So let's first try to SSH as Hadoop into localhost. Enter SSH Hadoop at localhost. Hit enter. Now, it might be that it asks you to trust a connection or not. Uh, of course, you should say yes, you're trusting that connection. Um, it's not asking me, but if you are asked, just say yes. Also, we must provide a password for the user Hadoop since we haven't set a passwordless SSH. So let's use the password. And now we use, uh, we're locked in as Hadoop. Now, if we would go ahead and try to SSH as um, Hadoop into localhost again, so SSH Hadoop at localhost, again would prompt me for a password because we have not set up passwordless SSH just yet. So we're not logging in. Okay, so first we need to create a key and we do that by typing SSH hyphen keygen hyphen T RSA. Hit enter. Now we can keep the default path, which is home hadoop.ssh um, idrsa. That's okay. Hit enter. Now we don't use a path, passphrase, so just hit enter twice. It's showing this fancy image. The key was created. Now that key must be appended to the authorized keys file inside our SSH folder. Note, however, in a normal setting, you have two computers, A and B. You want A to be able to passwordless SSH into B. Hence, you create a key on A and append that key to the authorized keys file on B. However, in this situation, we want to allow A to SSH into A without a password. So hence, we append the key to the authorized keys file on the same machine. 
Now after you created the key, get the content via the cat command and append it to the authorized keys file by doing the following. So cat.ssh id underscore rsa dot pub greater than greater than dot ssh authorized underscore keys. Hit enter. The cat command will retrieve the content of the id rsa pub file inside the hidden ssh folder. By the way, the dot in front of the ssh folder means it's hidden. The greater than greater than signs will append that content to the authorized keys file inside the SSH folder. As you can see, um, that is a bit more involved and it is where some familiarity with Linux really pays off. Okay, now if we try to SSH into um, as Hadoop into localhost again, so SSH Hadoop at localhost, enter, we're not prompted for a password again. So we have set up passwordless SSH and it works because we were able to SSH as Hadoop into localhost again. Now I know it looks a bit weird because we were already locked in as um, Hadoop, but this is basically an SSH in SSH. So hit control D to get out of that second SSH session. Now we're in the first one again and it works. So we have set up passwordless SSH. Hadoop needs that. Okay, next we need to start editing Hadoop's config files. For this, let's navigate into the following folder. So enter cd hadoop-3.3.0 and then etc and then hadoop. So we are uh, navigating into the hadoop folder, then to etc and then hadoop. Hit enter. And first let's have a look at the content of this folder. So insert ls and hit enter. Here you see that there are some XML files. Um, so you can see there's an dot XML file over there, there's one over there. And um, what we want to do is we want to use um, the nano editor to edit the core side XML file. So enter nano then core, oops, core hyphen site dot XML. Now you can enter your own configurations as XML data. Inside um, this configuration tag, we can add multiple property tags that contain name and value tags. So the first property we, we set will tell Hadoop that our HDFS is av available via the following route. So we navigate to that tag and the first thing we do is create a property tag. Inside that property tag we create a name tag and the, the name of the property we want to config is fs.defaultfs. Notice the capital letters. Then we end that tag, that name tag we insert another tag, the value tag, and the value for fs.defaultfs is hdfs, and then colon, and then forward slash, forward slash, local host port 9000. So we're using port 9000 on local host. And then let's end that tag, the value tag, and let's end the property tag. Right. Now save the content of this file and exit. So control X. Yes, we want to save that. Enter. Great. Next we need to configure our HDFS. As you know, HDFS stands for Hadoop Distributed File System. The fact that it is a distributed file system makes it obvious that we must provide some configuration on how the data should be stored. These configurations are made inside the hdfs-site-xml file. So let's bring up the content again and the config configuration file we want to edit is the hdfs-site.xml file. So enter nano hdfs-site.xml, enter. And again, there's um, the configuration tag. 
So the first property we set is the replication factor. Since this is just a sandbox, we will set the replication factor to one. So let's enter the following property. So of course a property tag, then a name tag, and the name of this property is dfs.replication. And the name tag, give it a value and we set the replication factor to one. Let's end the value tag. Let's end the property tag. So since we only have a single node, um, data cannot be replicated. If you connect more than a single data node, you can increase the replication factor. Um, next, we need to tell Hadoop where to save the actual files. I will do so by setting the following properties. So the first thing we want to do is create a new property tag. And the name of the first property is dfs.namenode.name.dir. And the name tag and create a value tag. And we set that to slash home slash Hadoop slash HDFS slash name node slash and the value tag and the property tag. Create a new property tag. Create a name tag. And then I want to um, configure dfs.datanode.dater.dir and the name tag, create the value tag and set the value to ho slash home slash Hadoop slash HDFS slash datanode slash and the value tag and let's end the property tag. Okay, so that was quite a lot. Okay, so let's digest what I just put in. So the first property, or more the, the second property, um, will save all the name node relevant files inside the name node folder, inside the HDFS folder, inside the Hadoop user workspace. Note that I'm not using the curly operator, but the full path name. So the curly operator for Hadoop, so the user workspace for Hadoop is slash home slash Hadoop. That is the, the user um, space. The last property looks very similar. Here tell Hadoop to save all data node relevant files like the actual blocks um, into the data node folder inside the HGFS folder in the Hadoop user space. So it saves the blocks in data node, HDFS, inside the Hadoop user space. Um, also note that those folders are not created yet. We must do that for Hadoop. Second of all, if this would be a production setting with multiple nodes, you would have to do that on all machines, of course. So we use the same configuration on all machines. So first let's save and exit now. So hit Control X. Yes, we want to save that and hit enter. So let's go back to the Hadoop user space. So hit control um, tilde. Let's get clear some space here. And here we create the HDFS data node folder. So enter mkdir for make directory hyphen p HDFS slash data node. So this will create the a data node folder inside the HDFS folder inside the Hadoop user space. Now hyphen P will tell it to create all parents of data node if they don't exist yet. So let's do the same for the name node folder. So enter mkdir hyphen P HDFS slash name node and hit enter. Remember that Hadoop runs inside the Java virtual machine. For this, we need Java installed on our machine, of course. Also, we need to tell Hadoop where it can find the Java version that we want it to use. However, for this, we need to either, uh, edit uh, another config file inside the Hadoop folder. So navigate into that folder. So CD, so just as a reminder, we have 
Hadoop in here and we've created the HDFS folder right there, right? So I can show you the content of the HDFS folder if you want. So there we've data node and name node. Okay, but again, let's go into the Hadoop folder, then etc, and then Hadoop, and hit enter. Now here we want to edit the Hadoop-env.sh file, um, which defines some variables. But before we do that, we need to know where our Java actually is. Now, if you're using Debian like I do, it should be located at slash user slash lib slash JVM slash Java uh, Java um, hyphen 11 hyphen open JDK hyphen AMD 64. Now you don't have to remember that. I will show you that. So we can check that this folder exists just by typing ls slash user slash lib slash jvm slash java 11 openjdk amd64 hit enter so um, that folder definitely exists so that path exists and we can put it into the configuration file now open the um, configuration file so just as a reminder we want to configure um, the following um, file we want to configure Hadoop hyphen env dot sh now configure it by open it with nano so nano Hadoop env dot sh and we are now looking for a line that says uh, that says export Java underscore home equal sign now first we need to find that line so there it is there it is, export java underscore home. Now uncomment that line by removing the hash symbol and add the path of your Java installation to it. So we're saying slash user slash lib slash jvm slash java hyphen 11 hyphen open jdk hyphen md64. Make sure you spell that correct because that's um, quite a path file. Um, okay, so we've done that. Now save the file and exit. So control X, yes, we want to change that. And yes, we over want to overwrite that file. Great. Okay, so the only thing left to do um, is to format the file system. Um, this has to be this has to be done before we first use Hadoop. Now, don't worry, we don't have to do that every time uh, we fire up our Hadoop cluster. Um, just make sure you did all the configurations. Then go into the Hadoop folder and enter the bin folder. So let's just go into the Hadoop folder again. So we know that the Hadoop folder is located at the user space. So just go there, and then let's go into the bin folder. So hit enter. Now we can say ls. And here we should find a file that says hdfs. Now there it is. And we can run that file and provide some arguments to it. Now do as I do to actually format the file system. So dot hdfs name node hyphen format and hit enter. So this will print some, pack, uh, some text. And after it is done, your HDFS should be formatted. Hadoop is now configured and we can start a first test run. Now go to the sbin folder inside your Hadoop folder and start the program start-dfs.sh. So I will just move one folder above. So cd dot dot, this will move one folder above. Then I will move into the sbin folder. So I'll take a quick look. And we want to to ac uh, actually execute the file start-dfs.sh. So that file is over there. And we say dot slash start-dfs.sh. Hit enter. Now wait a few seconds. Right. When all is done, we can go to Firefox and open the user interface for Hadoop. So 
Let's go to applications, internet, Firefox. And in Firefox, just enter localhost colon nine eight, whoops, sorry, localhost colon nine eight seven zero. Hit enter, it's loading. And there's all sorts of information in here, but most importantly, you can see that we have one working data node if you click on data nodes. So there is one data node right there that is currently being used. So we can say that we have a working HDFS, although it is not really distributed because we have just one data node and the name node is on the same machine. But we have done it, we have a functioning HDFS. Now, if you want to shut down the system, you can just go back to the terminal and instead of using start-dfs.sh, um, you can just enter stop-all, ah, sorry, dot slash stop-all.sh and this will close down Hadoop. So all Hadoop demons will stop. That should take a few seconds. Now Hadoop has stopped working and if you want, you could close down or shut down your system and you would be done.